Welcome to the Green Tea Machine. I am Ryan. And I'm Sam. Today we're going to talk about our injuries slash accidents we've gone through in the past. Yes. We haven't had that many injuries, but we have had things that made us bleed, and that's our stories. Correct. And like I said from last podcast, I have a story where I cracked my head open pretty bad, and we'll get onto that later. But also, speaking of last podcast, we had a little audio issue. We have acknowledged it and fixed it, and it will not happen again. It'll never happen again. Hopefully. Don't get your panties in a twist. Because it does sound a little weird. It sounds... You can definitely listen to the podcast. It just sounds a little different. Yeah. But anyways, more positive things, because this is the GTM, baby. This is a positive only zone. And we got to do the catch-up segment. Catch-up. that's what we're calling it. And we're not changing it. <laughs> Unless we think of something better. <laughs> yes. Because it was just catch-up, man. Anyways. Would you like to go first? I will go first. All right. Fine, sir. As I said before, I pre-ordered Mortal Kombat 11, mm -hmm. the 11th one, mm -hmm. and what I, can I say, dude, it's fantastic. Another Realm Studio strikes again. They, oh, dude, and they, they always up the ante with Mortal Kombat, but man, they really did something special to this one, so I'm excited for that. I'm going to be playing that on my laptop. Uh, if you want to 1v1 me, uh, bring it on. Bring it on, sucker! I'll, bring, I'll give you a whooping, baby! Anyways... Um, so yeah, I got that to play. I'm pretty excited. Also, <laughs> I've done one of the stupidest things ever, let me just say. So, I went to Walmart today, because mm -hmm. I was buying stuff, as you do in Walmart, and I saw, oh man, when, every time you go to Walmart, dude, you will see some strange folk. Oh, absolutely. Like that <laughs> website, People of Walmart? People, that's a website? Hey, I've been on that website. No. People, uh... I don't know who, like, runs it or whatever, but they post, like, pictures of weird people that go in Walmart. <laughs> Walmart? Yeah, like, just, like, disgusting <laughs> people, like, just walking in there, walking in oh, their yeah. pajamas and fats hanging out Ooh, and all that. yeah, dude. I've seen, dude, you see it all at Walmart. Every time you go to Walmart. Also, every time I go to Walmart around here, I see somebody I know. Every, oh, every, yeah. Every single time. Dude, I don't think I've ever yeah. gone there and not seen somebody that I know. Dude, that always happens to me. Like, seeing your teachers out in mm -hmm. public. It's like, hey. <laughs> it's like, ugh, this, ugh. this is what you look like. Not in the classroom. <laughs> yeah, so so I was shopping just for little things, and I wanted to get a dartboard because I haven't had one in a while. So I go to like the dartboard section, which is like by the pool table and tennis rackets for some reason. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. So I was there, and I was like, hey, a dartboard. But they also have an electronic dartboard that was, it was like 30 bucks, and I was like, do I really need this? No. So then I just bought the other one that was fifteen dollars and I was like, it's like an old school classic wooden board. I guess it's wood. Because what else would it be? And classic like when you when you picture what a dartboard is in your mind, this is what I'm buying. Yeah. So I bought this and I'm like, okay, I got all my things. And I drive home, whatever. And then I get home, like, yeah, I'm gonna open up this dartboard. I can't wait to throw some darts. I open it up. Actually, Ryan, you opened I it up. I came over and I opened it up. I was like, Oh, you got a dartboard? You're a cool, dartboard man. Band? Came over, opened it up, and then what did I what did I find inside the box? <laughs> you found the one thing that I wanted. The dartboard. <laughs> There's a freaking wall protector that goes behind the dartboard. Yep. So what you're saying is you didn't buy a dartboard. I didn't buy a dartboard. You bought a wall protector that goes around a dartboard. A freaking wall protector that I don't need. But the in your defense, the box does have a dartboard on it. Yeah. Whoever designed this Dartboard box and, mm. <laughs> but so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna open it up see if it if it's actually like worth it. So I open it up and I almost put the whole thing together, and then I'm trying to put the nails in because you gotta screw some parts. The nails do not fit the holes. Whoever designed this thing also needs to just. Well, you gotta return it so you can yeah, buy so a real I, buy an actual dartboard. Yeah, not gotta buy the electronic one because that's all they have. That's all they have for thirty bucks. Well, go, I mean, to, it's not go to Dick's or something. Dick's probably a dartboard. Dude, they probably, they probably got a dartboard for like 200 bucks. Yeah, And that's probably. our cheapest. And like, hey, this is our cheapest one. Dude, you can't, you can't uh, go, you cannot go into Dick's and walk and buy something for less than $20. Yeah. It's, it's impossible. Dick's is overpriced. It's impossible. <laughs> it's stupid, dude. I don't know how they're still, well, you know how they're still going? They got everything. Because there, there's no competition. Name another sporting goods store around here. Capella's. <laughs> that's that's well, not around here. Yeah, that's not around here. That's way 
I can't. Even, I don't even know how far away Cabela's is. But have you ever been there? I've never been to Cabela's. Dude, it's freaking nice. It's like, it's Dick's 2.0. I can't. I forget how many levels this one had, but I know there's at least two Where stories. Where was it at? The one you went to? Uh, probably in Virginia. But dude, that's been it's been years. I've never. I have been no there. idea. So yeah, I don't have a dartboard. I'm gonna have to get a new one. So that didn't really bum me out anyways. I'm just like whatever. Oh, won't make that mistake again. <laughs> Won't buy the dartboard. So if you if hey if you're out there trying to buy a dartboard, uh, don't buy the wall protector unless you really want it. Unless you already have a dartboard. Yeah. Unless... Don't buy the wall protector before you even have a dartboard. Don't do what I do. What we're trying to say. But yeah. So what's up with your ketchup segment? Uh, for my ketchup segment, let's just uh, call it ketchup. Ketchup. For my ketchup, um, I am in, me and Sam are both in a speech class. Not not at the same school. We go to different schools. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called public speaking. Public speaking. That is what the class is called. And uh, I delivered my final speech recently. Um, I wrote mine about Jimi Hendrix. Mm-hmm. I'm a big, big fan of Jimi Hendrix. So I kind of wrote, kind of wrote a story of his life, uh, his, his guitar playing, his death, uh, influences, stuff like that. And you got an A on it. And I did get an A on it. That's so right. That's pretty cool. Public, public speaking isn't that hard. It's not that. As long as you're, like, if you just really think about it, you're gonna not do well. Mm-hmm. You just gotta go in there and just, yeah, did, 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 and then you're done. Before you know it, you're done. done. You just, yeah, did, 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 and then you're done. Exactly. Well, my class only has like 15 people in it, and hardly any of them, hardly any of them ever show that's up. Mine too. So when I deliver speeches, like my final speech, like over half the class wasn't even there. So only like eight mm-hmm. people were there. <laughs> so if you're in college and you need to take a comm class, take public speaking. It's not that hard. Yeah. People don't care if you do bad. On a speech. I only gave three speeches all semester. You only had to do three? I only had to do three. I had to do like ten. I only had to do three. And it wasn't even that bad. I had to do my intro, my improv, and my final speech. And that's it. Well, that's good. Good. And now I'm done. <laughs> now I'm done. There you go. I gave a public speak. <laughs> <laughs> you gave a public I, speech. I gave a public speech. I don't think public speaking taught me anything. I, I gave a speech about uh, Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. So you did Jimi Hendrix, I did Michael Jackson, and I got an A on it. Well, you kind of talked about more of the controversy surrounding him kind recently. Barely, I touched on that at the end. Yeah. I just talked about his like influence on the world mm-hmm. and how like how famous he actually was. He was so famous. He probably is or was like the most famous person everyone, of our time. Everyone knows who Michael Jackson is. Mm-hmm. So, so talented. Love his music. Music great. So talented. Uh, not too good of a person though. But that, yeah, have you watched? <laughs> You, dude, you need to watch uh, Leaving Neverland. I haven't seen it. I yet. watched that at like four in the morning, and I was just like, "What, Michael Jackson? What? Oh man, dude. Yeah. It takes a turn. There's a part in the uh, documentary that just, oh man, mm-hmm. it'll just catch you off guard. But I'm not gonna say what it is. What a shame, honestly. Mm-hmm. But anyways, let's just. That is not what this podcast. That's is not about. what this podcast is about. This one's about us doing stupid things, and bleeding. Moments. Ble- bleeding moments. <laughs> so, my collarbone incident was probably the first thing that happened to me. I was so young. Do you remember anything I that happened? I don't even think I know about this. Alright, so I only broke one bone in my entire body, ever. And I was, oh my, I was probably less than five years old. But I was old enough to go on a swing, like a swing set. Mm-hmm. I remember I was in somebody's backyard, like one of my family members, and... You know, I'm you're just a little child swinging on this swing set, and I remember like you you keep you keep going back and forth, trying to get as high as you can get, uh-huh. and you're just getting that momentum. But I remember I was like, you know what, I'm gonna jump off. I'm like 20 feet in the air. Cause why not? Cause you're a kid, you know, you don't even know what's happening. Mm-hmm. So I jump off, thinking, oh, I'm gonna be safe, I'm gonna land this. And I just remember I just like landed and just like, like right on your shoulder. I, like yeah, like your collarbone, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. I can't remember if I, it was my left one. Mm-hmm. But I just That's all I pretty much remember I don't re- remember the pain or anything Did you go to the hospital or anything? Oh yeah But like The way you, Do you know how they fix collarbones? Not really no. like A doctor will just take his hands And just <laughs> And just snap it back Really? Yeah But They might have done it But that's like more painful Like how the they put, put your shoulder back into place Yeah just like You ever seen those videos of like people, Like doctors like Fixing a dislocated shoulder? Oh it's dude It's nuts Ugh you can, I need to do you, that can you just watch it snap back yeah, into it's place. Like, <laughs> it's like, oh dude, man. That's like chiropractor. You ever watch chiropractor videos? Oh, all the time. That makes dude, that makes me want to just go to a chiropractor. Yeah. 
because they can just crack every single part of my body and just be mm-hmm. amazing. Because I, cr- I crack my back like once a day. I'll just crack, 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 crack. I could probably do it right now. Oh, <laughs> there's just one. Well, that was your finger. <laughs> no, that was my back. Um, but yeah, I think I cracked my back recently, so it's not gonna work. But I'm, a, I'm, yeah, a, I'm a crack addict when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to cracking joints. <laughs> yeah, go around saying that. I'm a crack addict. I love crack. Um, what? But my dad, my dad told me a story when he was younger about he dislocated his shoulder uh, lifting weights. And Ooh. he had he drove himself to the hospital with a dislocated shoulder. He's like, oh. And this is back, it was his right shoulder, and he was driving a stick shift car. Oh, so he had to do all so of this. He had to, he had to drive with his left hand and shift gears with his left hand and drive. Dude, with what his left a hand. maniac! Because his his right arm was just dangling. I guess that's how people with one arm drive. Yeah, <laughs> they do everything with their that's one arm. Dangerous, but dude, that's oh that'd be terrible. Oh. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I cracked my I broke my collarbone. It's all healed now took me 15 years <laughs> finally Just healed yeah, it heals pretty fast so that was my young one but so the next thing that happened to me was probably it was later so i think you might have a story about your head what, 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 well, my head won't be the last one because mm-hmm. i almost died <laughs> yeah it's that bad well then what are you talking about what are we talk about um they're bloody noses because you used to get oh yeah pretty bad bloody noses. I get bloody noses all the time. I probably had no lie like over 50, 50 in my entire life. I get them what? all the time. Sometimes I'll just wake up in the morning and have a bloody. I've had a bloody nose in a while, but dude, when they happen, it's just annoying. Yeah, you're like, oh, my nose is bleeding. And you're like, and like you try to lean. Well, I don't know if you're. Spo- I don't even know if you're supposed to actually do that. People tell you to like lean your head back. Ew. And like you're swallowing all that Swallow blood. That blood. <laughs> But uh, probably like stick a tissue in there. Probably my worst one. I was actually at Sam's house, and well, that was later. Let's talk about the first one when you were on the bus. Oh, because right. I because this one I remember it. I don't. I can't remember if this was my first bloody nose, but this was a very memorable one. Oh yeah. Um, because you didn't have it. Didn't like you didn't cause it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> one of our friends did it. <laughs> so I was on the school bus. I can't remember what grade I was in. Elementary school. I know I was in elementary school. Um, I was riding. Yeah. Sitting next to. Our friend, our mutual friend Eric, mm-hmm. who used to live or li- used to live next to Sam Rowan. Yeah, um, one of my childhood friends. So uh, I'm sitting on I'm sitting in the school bus seat. Eric's sitting on my left, and Eric kind of like puts his head down in his lap. He, he's like tying his shoe or something. Yeah, something like that. He puts his head like he puts his head down all the way his lap. knees. And I don't know why, but for some reason, my head was over his head. You leaned over for some reason. Yeah, for some. I don't. Well, what know are you doing, why. Eric? What are you doing down there, man? For some reason, I leaned over. Can you hear me? My face right over the top of the back of his head, and then he just shoots his yeah. head back up. Yeah, and he, hits he me just right come up the slowly. Nose. I, yeah, I, I, I was sitting in the crossroad. I, I vividly remember this, mm-hmm. and he just right in your yeah, right, right, right in, in my nose, nose, and it was just like it starts bleeding everywhere. Yeah, just imagine somebody's skull is hitting you right in the face. Yeah, so but, my nose started bleeding, and then I remember my sister. Yeah, instantly bleeding. My sister was also on the bus, my older sister, and she had to take me, like, into the school uh, with, like, tissues around my face and walk me to the nurse's office and everything. Really? I think I, think I might have been in first grade or something. Yeah, uh, we were very young. But it was pretty nuts. So, yeah, that was the first first memorable one. And then you had another uh, bloody nose that wasn't your fault. Yeah, another one. You never call us bloody nose yourselves. You always <laughs> have somebody to hit you. I think uh, this was more recently, like three years ago or so. Oh yeah, definitely. Like two or three years ago, maybe. No. It was two or three years ago. You're right. Yeah. So, so um, we were at my house. We we're at your house, and our friend Tommy. He was about to move away, so we were yes. all hanging out with him and his some of his friends. Yeah. So. I guess what we were playing. Manhunt. We were playing manhunt. If you haven't played manhunt in your life, what are you doing? Manhunt. <laughs> it was part of. Uh, that was a big moment. Mm-hmm. I love playing Manhunt growing up. If you don't know what Manhunt is, it's basically hide-and-go-seek tag, but you're in the dark. Yeah, so you wait till the dark, and then... Let's just explain what Manhunt is, in case people want to go play it. Yeah, there you go. So you you have one base that's usually like a basketball hoop. like the, Well, the we, use, we use your basketball hoop. We, yeah, base. that's pretty much what you use. Mm-hmm. Or Eric's. And so you have either, like, one person... No, you always have one person that's... Defending. At least one what person. What are they called, defending. like... Defend. <laughs> the, I guess they're called defenders. nothing. They're defending they're the it. base. You know, they're it. Yeah, they're and it. Yeah. So their goal is to defend the base 
while everybody else goes around hiding the neighborhood. Well, not really the neighborhood. It's kind you, of just like a yard. You have a boundary, and mm-hmm. you're supposed to play inside the boundary. Mm-hmm. But, you know, sometimes some, it happens. Sometimes man. things happen. You go out of it, <laughs> and you gotta hide. So we used to play, and there'd be like, oh man, there'd be like 10 people hiding. Mm-hmm. One person's it. Guarding the well, base. Well, one person. There's usually more than. There's one person like guarding the base at all times, but other people that are on that person's team are looking for the people that are hiding. Well, whenever so, whenever the person guarding the base tags somebody, they become it. They with become them. it. Yeah. So now two people are guarding the base, mm-hmm. and all the so all the else people are trying to get to the base, and then you slam it, and you say like ABC base on me. <laughs> yeah, Remember that? You used to say ABC that. base on me. Like super fast. <laughs> Like one one word before you get tagged. So and then you're safe, and you you walk around like hey, I'm I'm not it. And you just walk around, and, yeah. you, and you just watch for that next like round or whatever uh-huh. you call it. But man, there's been a lot of moments when you're just getting chased. Yeah, and you just. You I just remember lie. our the tactic was just wear all black and then just lay down in the grass. Oh, like, that so was just completely tactic. flat on the grass. Some people climb trees. Yeah, get in bushes. But man. So, we'd, we'd have, like, all the neighborhood kids play. Yeah. That was a big part of our that childhood. That was great fun. So, anyways, we're playing Manhunt at my house playing a couple of years ago because we had a lot of people, and we're like, let's just do it for all time's sake. Mm-hmm. So, anyways. I, uh, I was, I guess you'd call it the attacking team because I was trying to get... You were it. I, no, I was trying to, no, I was trying to get on base. Oh. And... Oh, Okay. And our friend Noah was there, and he was trying to defend me to get on base. Oh, so he was he was trying to tag you. Yeah, he was so trying to be on his team. He was trying to tag me, but there was also it wasn't just him that was it. Somebody else was it on his team. I can't remember who though, because I was kind of running from them, and I kind of I tried to go in between these trees in Sam's yard to get away from them, and then just out of nowhere, boom! <laughs> Noah just runs into me. His like the his head like right above. Like, right where his hairline is, on the left side of his head, just smacks me right on the right side of my nose. Another head, another skull. Another, another skull hit me in the nose. <laughs> That's weird. I thought, I swore, my, my nose was swollen for, like, three days after that. And I pretty I, yeah. all, I pretty much had, like, small black eyes. So I remember when you got hit, I, like, some of us ran over, and like, what the heck just happened? Mm-hmm. And you just see a bunch of blood on the, on the grass. Yeah. And we're like, what? What is, we're like, what is going on? Yeah. And then we're like, oh, Ryan has a bloody nose. Yeah. We had no idea what happened. Yeah. So then I take you into one of my bathrooms. I, but I remember I was just standing there, like, just letting... Uh, it was so much blood. That was the so you, that was the bloodiest bloody nose I've ever so, had. So you really didn't know what to do? You just waited on, like, me to come? Yeah. Like, Ryan, okay, Ryan, get in the bathroom. Like, a lot of th- a lot of times, even now, when I get a bloody nose, I kind of just let it bleed till it's gone. Oh, God. That's what I... Like, you just hold... You just keep using tissues and kind of making it... Like, wiping it away. You lose all your blood. You just let it go away. Yeah, sure look. <laughs> No blood. You know, you know blood in your body. I'll just become a raisin. <laughs> have no blood. But I remember it was really bloody, and then Sam took me into his bathroom. He, what, he, hey, showed me where the bathroom was. Let me wash off all that. Mm-hmm. Gave me some water, and then I was all good. Yeah, just give him water. But I get bloody nose all the time, especially in like the winter time when I wake up and it's a little cold, yeah. a little chilly. I haven't gotten one in a while. I remember one time I was in math class and I was just sitting there doing nothing, and I start feeling like. Something underneath my nostrils. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my god, I'm, I have a bloody yeah. nose. Sometimes I'll just wipe my nose and there'll be blood on my hand. And then just he's like, out of nowhere. He's like, oh, sorry, I gotta go to the bathroom. He's get up and just go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And then you're there for like 10, 20 minutes. You're like, what? Thanks for a bloody nose. But, anyways, so that was. So that was your last, like, real bloody nose? That was my last, like, really, really bad one. Yeah. That was a couple of years ago. You're doing good. I mean, I, I've still, I still get them all the time, but they're not that bad. I don't know. Not that bad. I haven't had one in a long time. I get time. them in the shower a lot, too, because it's hot in there. And, when I'm, and, and if I'm in a hot tub for too long, I'll get them like this. <laughs> it's just weird. Really? It's weird. I don't know. And I've walked, dude, your body doesn't like the temperature. Yeah. So sometimes if I'm in the shower and I get bloody nose, I just let it happen. Like, it oh, looks like someone got murdered in like, my bathroom. the day I'm dying. <laughs> all my blood's going away. Yeah. <laughs> so, now I have... We both have, like, concussion stories, mm-hmm. but mine wasn't really a concussion. So, do you want to go yours, or... Um, well, you go first, because okay. I have to tell something about Mine that. was a very minor concussion. Now, if you're on the Hedgesville soccer team, you'll remember this. What year was it? 2016. Yes, I was on the soccer team, and we were in... We were... Oh, where were we? I think we were in Charleston, West Virginia. And I'm playing defense because that's all I played because I sucked. I was not good at soccer at all. I don't know how I was on the team. 
Actually, I do know. I do know why I was on the team because you're I was fast. Just fast. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Manhunt made me fast. <laughs> so, anyways, I'm defending, and there's a guy like right in front of me with the ball, and I remember he just kicks the ball like from like from five feet in front of me. He just kicks the ball and just smacks me on the face. I don't know how I didn't get a bloody nose. I don't think I ever heard about this. But I try to jump. I try to jump in the air. And as I jumped in the air to to avoid the soccer ball, it just hit me. I just went so you jumped, I instantly. You jumped, you jumped into it. I guess I jumped into it. I was like, no! And it just hit me. Mm-hmm. And I instantly just fell to the ground and was like, oh, my face. And then, like, did you everybody... Take, did you take a concussion test? Yeah. Everybody thought I had a concussion. So they immediately took me out of the game. And I was like, yes. I'm not in the game anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not really. But, you know, soccer was just like, eh, for me. So, yeah. But anyway, so I went to the doctor, and they, like, tried to test me. They did all the tests or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I didn't really, I didn't have a concussion at all. I just kind of acted like I did. Because I didn't want to play soccer. <laughs> well, there you go. I've done that. I was that, I was that guy. I did that with football. <laughs> which I'm about to tell right now. That's why Hedgeville will never be good. You got all these, <laughs> you got all these people that are just wimps. They just don't care. Yeah. I guess I was kind of... I barely did it, but, so, yeah. So, now, you have a concussion story. I have a, yeah. Uh, but first, I want to talk about my broken pinky. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> this story. Which doesn't sound like a, a bad. A oh, it's bad, bad dude. It's real bad. Um, I was, so, my sophomore year of high school, uh, was playing football on the football team. I was a wide receiver and, and kind of like a punt returner, I guess. So, it was during practice one day. And um, we were using the punt machine, but for some reason the punt machine was like turned on super overdrive. Like these balls were shooting like super duper overdrive. Yeah, these balls were shooting crazy high in the air, like way higher than I've ever seen them before. Than anybody would ever punt. Yeah. So I won. I caught a few. Like I did like three or four, and then on, like on the next one, um, the, for this some reason this one was super short, so I had to run. I had to run forward to catch it, and I was running forward towards the ball up in the air with my hands out like trying to catch it and then mm-hmm. it came down and hit my left hit my left hand Ooh. and my pinky and I swear my pinky it like this part of my pinky came down and like hit my wrist <laughs> like the top half like you have no. two you have two you have two knuckles on your pinky but the, the where the first one is it came down and it hit my wrist oh and it, I, st- I had my football glove on and it broke my pinky broke while I had my glove on and then that was the first time I'd ever broken a bone. Like, I'm going to lose my pinky. And I had to take my glove off with a broken pinky just dangling. <laughs> like, what's that? Coach. So I, so I ran to the athletic trainer, and I told her I broke my pinky, and she gave me ice and all that. Oh, man. Do you remember the pain? Uh, like on a scale of 1 to 10, how bad was the pain? It was pretty bad. Well, it when it when it happened, it, was, it wasn't that bad, like, right when it happened, but later, like, I guess after my adrenaline wore off, it started to hurt really bad. You're just sitting there like, this isn't too bad. Oh, it hurts! <laughs> yeah. I remember going to, like, urgent care to get a splint, uh, stint for it, whatever you call it, and, like, waiting in the waiting room, and it hurting so bad, like, it was making my head hurt how bad that my pinky hurt. So it was, like, an 8 or a 9? It was probably, like, an 8 or a 9 out of 10. On yeah. a scale. Um, oh, man, that hurt. So after that, I was, I was pretty much out for the rest of the season, only because my doctor told me that he thought I might have to get surgery on it. So that's what I told my coaches, and my doctor said that I couldn't I couldn't play because we might have to do surgery in like a month. And then like the week where I was maybe gonna have to get surgery, my doctor was like, "No, you're fine." So my pinky had just like healed. Yeah. So then, so then I came back. It was like the end of the season for, for football, and the game I came back, I got a concussion. <laughs> really? Yes. I don't think you're that. So I only played two. I only played two games. So the game, wow. came, the game I came back, my coach was excited. He was like, yeah, we're putting you in. Here you go. Playing well, you're receiver. playing running back. You're playing wide receiver. <laughs> yeah. You're playing punt returner. You're playing kick returner. Playing quarterback. You're doing everything. Quarterback. <laughs> so he put me in a wide receiver, and they were giving the ball to me, like, every play. <laughs> and it's like, I, I don't know. I, I just remember running and getting hit. Was this varsity? No, this is JV. Oh, it was JV. So um, they were giving the ball to me every play, and I just remember running and getting hit. I don't. I don't feel. Like, I don't feel like I got hit that hard, but I definitely get, did get tackled a bunch. Yeah. So and I guess I got a concussion because my head started really hurting, and I got a concussion. And I tested for concussion, and it tested positive. And then wait, so you just had a bad tackle? 
It was like I, I don't think it was one incident that did it. I oh, think it was, mine was one incident. My, I think mine was multiple. Like <laughs> like they literally gave me the ball every play, and our team sucked, and I didn't know how to play because that was my second game. So I just kept yeah. doing terrible and kept getting hit really hard. Oh my god! And it gave me a concussion. Stupid coaches. Um, not even, not even Hedgeville coaches would, would do that. <laughs> yeah, I literally had been I. That was literally my second game. I'd been out for like over a month, and they're just yeah. like, "Give him the ball every single time." He knows no yeah. plays. He knows nothing. <laughs> Man, that's a that's a bad strategy. Yeah, but that's why like, guys so then I, so then I was like, "All right, I'm just gonna be out for the season because I have a concussion now." So then I was pretty much out. Yeah. So we both went out, and then I never played football again. Yeah. Played football. You have you have any fun? Um, games were fun except for that game. But my, the first game I played in was you fun. Two games that you played. And the scrimmages were fun. We I, we scrimmaged like two or three times, and I did pretty well. Yeah. But then, but then I just hated. I I don't know. I had a lot of problems with football in my school. It was just not. If you were on JV, which I was, it was not fun. Yeah, that's what JV. That's how JV is. Because what you would do, and if you're on if you're on the JV team, what you would do is you'd practice. So you would you'd go to practice, you'd do your drills. So I was on a, like a, I was a wide receiver, so I would do wide receiver drills. So I would catch balls, I'd run routes, whatever. And then you, after you did that for like 15 minutes, for the rest of the practice, you would just stand there and watch varsity practice. I'm not kidding at all. Yeah. If you're not on, because so like there's a thing called scout defense or offense, oh, yes. yeah. where you're basically just test dummies for the varsity team. So you just run plays. Yeah. What a stupid against way. Them. Of practicing. Yeah, and if you're not chosen to be on scout, then you literally just stand there and watch them. Do, I remember watch them that. practice, which cool. I thought was such a waste of time. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, in we'll high talk, school. We'll talk about that high school later. sports because I also played football mm -hmm. for one year, and I actually liked it, even though we went 0 and 10. <laughs> but I'll leave it. At that. I forgot you went 0 and 10. <laughs> Yo, we went 0 and 10. Oh, Hedgeville was bad that year. Real bad. Bad. And so yeah, now this is all leading up to. The story of me cracking my head open. Now, let me say. This is kind of... Like, so there's been a bunch of memories of my uh, youth, but this one sticks out. Like, on... I remember every. I remember what I was, like, what I was thinking, the pain and everything. So in my neighborhood, where it happened, there's, like, there's a ditch. But it's, like, where all the water goes to. What is that called? A ditch. The, the drainage the ditch. The drainage ditch. Drainage ditch. Like a huge one in my neighborhood. And then past the ditch, the drainage ditch is like this forest where the water is supposed to keep going into like a river and just go out of the neighborhood. So not this drainage ditch, but the one on the other side of the neighborhood. The one in the front yeah, side yeah. of the neighborhood. So this the drainage ditch was dry. And my friend and I, his name was Jacob. I don't know his last name at all. I don't. This is how young it was. That's one thing I don't remember. He, he used to live in the neighborhood, and I was probably seven or eight years old when this entire thing happened, but so we're like, you know what, we used to explore the neighborhood together, because what else are you going to do as seven years old? So we're like, let's go into this forest over here, and we start walking in past the drainage ditch, and there's a bunch of rocks that are in the river. The river has a bunch of like, like, our head. Like a, a human head size of rocks mm -hmm. were just everywhere on the river. But past the rocks, like right next to the rocks was this tree that was slanted. It was like slanted like this. So like over where the, where the river would run? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It didn't go over the river. It was right to the side of the, all the rocks. And I was like, I looked at him and was like, you know what? I'm going to climb this tree. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I'm just going to climb it. How tall? I'm not going to fall. How tall was the tree? It was probably like 15 feet once you got to the top. Mm -hmm. So it was it was diagonal at like a 55 degree angle. It wasn't much 45, but it was slighted <laughs> higher. You need you need these facts. <laughs> you need the geometry of the tree. It wasn't like I just fell. No, I fell high. So anyways, I'm climbing this tree up, and Jacob is just sitting there watching me, standing there watching me by the rocks, and I'm climbing this tree. I'm like halfway up, and I remember thinking like, you know, if I fall, I could seriously like injure myself. But I just kept going up, and I kept going up and up and up, and I'm almost at the top of this slanted tree, and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm almost done. And before you knew it, I was falling head first, and... Like, looking down at the ground? Looking down. I remember, like, falling, like, like my head was first. My, I don't mm -hmm. think my feet were up in the air. 
I like for some reason like flat. I guess I was flat, and for some reason my head hit the landing first. And it was like the back right of my head. Mm-hmm. And I just slammed on a, these rocks. How far do you think you fell? Like, like 15 feet. Like, no way. Really? Yeah, that way? high? I, was, I can show you if it went right now. I How are you like, not dead? That's what I'm saying. I thought you fell like six feet, no, six or seven I must have landed perfectly on these rocks. Because if I would have landed, I could have like landed underneath my neck. And uh-huh. just, that could have been it. Just, yeah. and I'm gone. But I, I landed on probably like the hardest part of my head where like, my skull just took the impact and I just hit it and I, I immediately was just like what just happened and then I got up and I just remember the pain I remember it, it was one of those like stories that the pain hurt so bad that it didn't really hurt mm-hmm. I was just like god what just happened and I immediately put my head on my hand on my head and then I started walking away back to my friend's house and I was like Jacob get your mom <laughs> now <laughs> and I was still holding my head and then I took my hand off my head, and I just, like, covered in blood. Just, like, oh, like, head blood. Head blood. Head blood. Different blood. I did not know you fell that high. It was bad. But, so that was, like, that was my last time I really, like, did something bad. Have, you gone, have you gone back to that tree since? No. We, we should, should climb it, though. We should go back and go climb, back and climb it. it and see if it, I'd I'll live do, again. I'll do it right now. <laughs> I wonder if that tree's still there. I, I could probably show you where it's at someday. And maybe we'll we'll see if it was 15 feet. We'll we'll get back to you guys on that. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You were young, so it might might have been. I thought, it might have looked high. higher than you thought it was because you were so short. But I was seven, and dude, that was pretty bad. That was pretty traumatic for me. And then I had to, I had to go to the ER right after, and so they didn't uh, stitch my head because you know how like you get stitches for mm-hmm. whatever they like. It's called staples. Mm-hmm. They put staples in your head. They take, they take a stapler and just go. I don't even know how they do it. Probably not like that. They have some special tool, mm-hmm. but they just staple my head back, and I'd be in class, and I remember like feeling in my head, and boop, a staple came out. <laughs> you pulling staples out of your no, head? No, no, they're they're supposed to fall out. Uh, like once your like head flesh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> starts healing, mm-hmm. they just fall off, and you're just like, ugh, this staple just came out of my Get head. Get out of my head. I remember it, it itch and just like it was a bad time for me, but you know you get over it. Mm-hmm. And then you have a story to tell, <laughs> and, and then you talk about it on a podcast. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was just so weird because it was just so vivid. But yeah, I wish I, guys know. I wish I was there. Why didn't you invite me? Because I had another friend. Why didn't you invite me to climb trees with you? Hey, we climbed trees, but not like that. We used to climb climbing. rocks. Do you remember climbing trees in my backyard? Not this backyard, but oh. my backyard across. Oh, yeah. The apple trees. Were they apple trees? Mm-hmm. That's fun. That's Climbing like, trees when you're a kid is so fun. Yeah, you got to. Because you're not going to do it as an adult. Yeah. You got to do it when you're a kid. I'm never I'm never going to look at you like, you don't look fun, man. Unless you're next to a river, like an actual river with water in it, and you can jump off oh, into yeah. the water. That's true. But. Or like a rope swing. Times. I always wanted to do that. Like a rope swing in a river. Yeah. I've never done that. <laughs> There's a bunch of videos that... Like, people will, like, fall off, and <laughs> there's so many bad videos. Do this, yeah. And they just, like, tear up their body. So, that was a good time. Pause. Are you doing the Would You Rather? Oh, yeah. I'll pause right now. Now we're going to do the Would You Rather part to end out this podcast. Yes, we are. And last time I did the Would You Rather, now it's time for Ryan. This time I'll be it. I will be the question asker. Hit me, Ryan. All right, the would you rather question of this podcast is I'm would, here. Listen. Would you rather live in the wilderness far from civilization or live on the streets of a city as a homeless person? Well, I'd love to be in the forest. Do you think you do you think you could survive? Oh, on I could survive. Own? Really? I don't want to be begging for food and, as a homeless person. That'd be a bad time. Yeah, but if you had to be homeless anywhere, it would definitely be in a city though. There's too many, too many homeless people. Well, yeah, but that's why they all go to the city. It's the best place to be homeless. That's why I'm in the. Place that's why be. I'm in the forest, Ryan. Okay. And dude, when you're out there, by the time you know it, you're gonna become a beast. You're gonna be chopping down trees, making a little tree hut. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be that easy. Yes, it is. I mean, you'll definitely adapt to it, but it's gonna take a long time. Think, gonna, think about the winters. Dude, I'm, I'll kill a bear. Take the, <laughs> the kill wool. a bear with I'll, what? 
with my survival skills, Ryan. You think I'm just out there as an idiot? But yeah, it'd probably be hard. Yeah, it would definitely. I'm not be. saying, it's gonna I'm be not easy. saying you couldn't do it. I'm just I'll saying. definitely have a, a spear with a sharp rock on the end. And I'll be hunting. Am I, by, am I out there by myself? Yeah, by yourself. 100% by yourself. Okay. So and I'll, I'll, I'll take it even farther. You you can bring... Okay, you're out there by yourself. You can bring one weapon and a backpack full of supplies. And that's it. I'm definitely putting it out there. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to be in a city sleeping on cement. I'm going to make my own thing. That's right. That's Dude, think answer. about for the rest of your life living out in the woods by yourself. Dude, you're, you're going to make a freaking civilization out there. <laughs> by the time you're like get, as you keep going you know you've never been more right in your entire life oh I'm always right but that's my answer that was my that's my answer as well I just like to argue yeah. that's I think I, giving the backpack is too much I think you should be up there just with just like, just with the clothes on your back and whatever's in your pockets right now that's all you got I got nothing in my pockets <laughs> there you go I'm double <laughs> by yourself I think I'm gonna be in my dude, pocket that'd be hard you ever read the hatchet did you ever read that book no that kid had a hatchet He's going to visit his grand, or his father, and then the crane, the the crane plashed. <laughs> he was in a crane plash. He the two and all, he, all he had was his hatchet. Yeah. And then he survived, and then someone rescued him at the end. There you go. Is there spoilers? Ch- if you never a, read the hatchet. <laughs> wow. Is there a chance that I could get rescued? Um, no. I'm still going out there. There has to be something bigger that would just change my mind. Like. <laughs> like werewolves were out there or something. Alright, would you rather okay, shit. how about this? Would you rather be home <clears throat> would you rather be homeless on the streets of a city of your choice and you always get a guaranteed Martinsburg. You you, <laughs> you always get a one meal you get you guaranteed every day one meal. I do that anyways. Or live in the Arctic by yourself. Hell no. Screw the cold, dude. <laughs> homeless. So homeless on I'd the streets. I'd rather be in a warm forest. What city would you choose if you had to be homeless? A warm one. Like what? Like name Miami one. or some group. Miami. Miami. No, no, no. L.A., dude. When I was when I visited L.A., I had the best weather. <laughs> cool summer nights and just warm days. It was cold enough during the summer nights to go in the hot tub. Oh, dude, I'm homeless. I'm going in people's hot tubs. <laughs> just dude, see you, man. I'm definitely they're doing gonna, that one. Gonna I get a meal a day. A guaranteed one meal a day. That's way better than being in the cold. I'm not a cold person. I'd rather be. I'd rather be sweating from head to toe than freezing from head to toe. Yeah, that's I how I am. Oh. All right. So your answer is. Why? What would you do? The cold? No, I would definitely. If I had a guaranteed meal every day and a city of my choice. You didn't have to guarantee me a meal every day. If I get a guaranteed hot tub every night. Well, I just well either what like say living around here in the wilderness, winter is still going to be terrible. Yeah, you never specifically said what like. Well, yeah. Well, let's yeah. Let's just assume. Right. Like you said like the Amazon or is, is that a Amazon rainforest? An, an Amazon. Yeah. Rainforest. No way. You're dead in two days. Yeah. You get jaguars and spiders <laughs> eat you alive. Yeah. But you know, like so, okay, around here, in West Virginia. Yeah. Around this area. It gets so cold. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm doing. Do you still pick. I'm choosing. What is it against? We have so many, like, would you rather's right this now. This is the original question. Would you rather live in the wilderness far from civilization or We're live homeless? on the streets of a city of a city as a homeless person? But let's, it's as, not a let's choose, assume that... I can't choose my city? No. Let's assume that the wilderness <laughs> is around here and you cannot choose your city. I'm still in the wilderness. I'll make a nice... I'll have a fire. I'll make a fire. You're not, not going to make a fire as a homeless person in a city. Like, I'm sure there are warm places. I just don't want to be homeless. Unless I have a free meal and I got hot tubs. There you go. That's my answer. <laughs> and that is the would you rather part of the podcast. Leave some comments if you want us to answer any would you rather questions that you can think of or see on the internet. S- specifically talking to you, Hunter. Talking to you, Hunter. Give us a would you rather, Hunter, and we'll answer it. Well, it's probably going to be the dumbest thing ever. Well, Hunter, H- Hummer. <laughs> I just called him Hummer. <laughs> Hunter yeah. does say dumb stuff sometimes. And yet that guy's getting married. <laughs> yes he is so anyways so alright thank you for listening thanks for Green listening Green Tea Machine and uh, make sure to like and subscribe and follow us on Twitter yeah we got we have the Green Tea Machine Twitter page and follow both of us correct and we'll probably follow you back 
Someday we'll be certified. Someday we'll get that little check next yeah. to our name. Yeah, right. What does that even t- like? How do you get certified on Twitter? I have no idea. You just have to. You have to have all the qualifications. What's the qualifications? I don't know. I'm not certified. You have to have a certain amount of followers. You have to whatever. Maybe we have to do something. It's like getting a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> the Nobel, the modern day Nobel Peace Prize, being this certified game. on Twitter. Yeah. So yeah, that is that. So thank you for tuning in to the. Green Tea Machine. Adios. Adios, McDonald's.